Hello, Nick here. And um, I'm going to do a comparison between my ICOM 9500 and my Watkin Johnson 8711. It's about 9 p.m. Central Standard Time in Dallas, Texas. Both radios will be on my Wellbrook antenna mounted outdoors running through my Stridesburg engineering multi-coupler. So no need to throw switches or anything, just hit the volume switches and roll. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in on each one just so we can get close. You can see me hit the controls and, and, and kind of see all that kind of stuff, so. All right, so let's, since we have a spectrum scope here, let's start here. I've already done a couple of videos on this radio, so if you've watched those, you're probably familiar with the operation. We're on the 49 meter band, which runs from 5.8 to 6.2 megahertz, and it's usually very lively this time of night here. So we'll check it out, and we'll look for some weak signals to compare, and maybe some not so weak signals. Oh. So the ICOM has its own internal front firing speaker. The Watkin Johnson does not have an internal speaker, so I hooked it up to a good speaker, my Bose, and have it plugged into the headphone jack. So, you know, I, I don't know if that's an advantage for the ICOM or not, but we'll see. So, I'm going to try not to do a lot of talking. I want you guys to listen. If I change bandwidths, you'll be able to read it, okay? If I change bandwidths here, you'll be able to read it. If I do sync or a different mode, you'll be able to see that here. If I do sync or a different mode, you'll be able to see that here. This has noise reduction, digital noise reduction. If I turn it on, you'll be able to see that green light. It also lights up up there, all right? This does not have digital noise reduction. This is gonna be a test of one radio versus the other, and each radio can use all the bullets in its own bandolier to do whatever it has to do to try to perform as best as possible. So there's none of this, hey, don't use sync because the WJ doesn't have sync. I mean, excuse me, uh, noise reduction. So if it helps, if the NR helps, we're gonna roll with it. Um, both radios do have a preamp. That will be indicated up here. Watkin Johnson will be indicated down here. So again, I'm gonna try not to do a lot of talking. You guys pay attention to me twisting volume knobs and pushing buttons and watching the displays change. This is Radio Havana. Sometimes it just sounds weird, right? I think they have trouble with their transmitter. But well, usually comes in pretty good on six thousand. Two hundred nations have wrapped up the United Nations. All right, so here'll be our first test: sixty, seventy, and eighty. Six zero. Oh. Sixty, seventy, and eighty. If you look at the scope, it looks like all three are up. And I should be able to listen to them, and they're only 10 kilohertz apart. So we'll see how that sounds, see if any of the others interfere with any of the others. So let's, since this one has a scope and we're here, so let's start here. They, they don't offer employment, they don't offer, uh, I wouldn't imagine anyone uh, feeling that. Uh, it's done. And I just don't feel like uh, a of people are going to the same kind of security. They may be safe. Uh, they may completely 
uh, you know, have... So the first thing I notice is if you listen to 70, there's a little squeak in the background, which I believe is the other powerful station, 60, coming in and, and interrupting this signal. I think that's what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm not really an expert on this. I don't know, but I think that's what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the attenuation to bring all the signals down. Uh, I might even back off on the RF. And then I'm also, obviously, I'm going to, um, I might try the shift because this thing has, has shift and I might use the noise reduction. So just keep an eye on the switches. And it becomes successful and it's, you know, relatively risk free. We don't hear about terrible accidents or anything. Did you hear that little whip? This is something that we're going to uh, probably have to uh, address here in Toronto, uh, Pearson, huge airport, got hundreds of thousands of people going through a day. And uh, I love that when I get out there and I'm going home, you know, I can take uh, any number of ways, subway, the top express, um, or I can get a cab or an airport limo. And in each of those instances, it just feels more organic to me. I know that's kind of a, uh, you know, a flighty kind of word to use, but it does. It feels organic to me. It feels like, um, you know, I, I've got a human touch and after a long day, flying, a long day of traveling, um, I think that I, I, I require that, I need that, I want that um, sense of, of safety that I know I'm going to get home safely, and I don't want to necessarily just talk to a robot or punch in uh, something on a screen and say, get me home, and, and not have any control over it. So uh, that's my take on it. I'm not sure that this experiment... Uh, All right, so it looks like we might have lost 60... Nope, still there. 80 still there. All right, so let's go to the WJ. I can still hear a little bit of that squeaking that I think is coming from 60 occasionally. It's not as high pitched on this radio, but I but I sense it every once in a while. I hope that everyone walks away from this, but I fear that it's going to put people out of work, drivers out of work. We have started this project, but I'm mentioning because we have we have had some fun for it. So, uh, you know, you only got the radio. How does it work? You know, the television. Look at the moving pictures. I don't want to sound like that, but I have a feeling uh, that this needs just a bit more fine tuning. I am Richard Krause, sitting in for uh, Jim Richards on a new talk tonight. Jim will be back in a few weeks. He's taking some uh, time off over the holidays and uh, resting, recharging, and getting ready to walk again. Uh, I'll be here. We're going to uh, go back to the read, uh, the rundown. We're going to have a look at some of the hot topics of the day with some of the smartest people I know. Stay with me. I'm Richard Krause, in for Jim Richard. Time for News Talk 1010, time saver traffic. 401 eastbound express lanes at Victoria Park. We have a stalled vehicle in the right lane. 409 westbound at Carl View, a stalled vehicle in the right lane there. And the 401 eastbound lanes at Mississauga Road, the right lane closed there for construction.
Silver Shamrock running third at Mark. Saves up to 50 percent on Silver Brands in time for the holidays. Visit Mark's in store or Mark's.com to shop and save. And return. Your next update at 5 a.m. on New Talk 1010. A bridge of glass bears down on BBC. I'm Earl Fernandez tonight on CTV National News. The danger. Well, this is tomorrow at 11 at a CTV News. That's it. fading in and out when I turn the sink off and that chirping seems to be there more. slightly flashing on, a, on occasion. That means I'm losing lock because I'm running 30 dB. Let's only run 24.
Welcome back, everybody. I'm Richard Krause, sitting in for the vacation in Jim Richard. At least he says he's on vacation, but I heard he's a mall Santa during the holiday season. That's my story, and that's what I'm sticking to. Uh, we have a big show for you, including our next feature. It's called the... All right, let's go back, try and find another signal. So before we leave this, because by the end of this video, I might forget all this stuff that just happened. Obviously, both radios. Now, we don't have a cheap radio here to compare this to, or, or I didn't turn one on. Okay. These are arguably two of the finest radios that were ever made. And you're listening to them struggle to, to over this 6070. Now, they weren't really struggling, but I'm being picky when I'm, when I'm pointing out that little chirping thing that was in the background. That was coming from one of the signals. I think it was coming from 60, 6060 on this side. All right. Um, so uh, obviously the sync helped mute it. I think the sync on this one helped mute it better. Obviously the noise reduction helps, although it gives a little bit of that synthetic effect. But I backed the threshold off, and uh, you can obviously you can still hear it. So even if you have to put up a little bit of that syntheticness, if it gets rid of the noise and the chirps and all the other stuff, hey. I, it's working, right? So, all right, so let's look for some more stuff. But this is a, a, a different angle on this story, I think. So he has said, after a kind of disastrous poll that he did on the weekend, where he said, I'll step down and the CEO of 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 the CEO have shocked everybody saying, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God anymore. God is just a... You know, this in my message today. Um... Hundreds of thousands of copies of records being played on contemporary Christian radio stations. How many of these people... When it happened, they did... The reason the see the um, the ba remember I told you so this radio was like got a six megahertz divider so if you're over six megahertz it remembers the settings I had in but as soon as you go under six it thinks you're you're in a different band and and it changes you back to whatever you set for that one so. I'll just put in 12 dB there as well. Um, and then it'll stop doing that fluctuation. All ICOMs do that. Yesus, too. too. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit on the scope.
vomit. Observation here is I think the WJ is is uh, bringing this in better now I don't know if it's because I got this awesome Bose speaker literally three inches from the microphone on this camera okay I, I mean the other one has a front-facing speaker too that's right there so uh, obviously I'm thinking this Bose is a way better speaker than the other radio but uh, uh, I mean, ideally, I guess I could plug that speaker into the other radio, but I'm trying to make these radios work off of their own. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I'm thinking the WJ might have took this battle here, this round. I think it sounds a little better. It does. It, it, the other radio, though, ICOM had the noise reduction to mess with a little bit. It seemed to help at some point there when I turned it way up. And even though there was still some syntheticness or even more syntheticness, 
Um, if I turn the volume up, work there, through it, you can you could hear what he was saying and make it out. But I think overall, I think this one is getting this particular signal better than the icon. Uh, let's try something else. I just zero beated this. You hear that? It came in perfect. So we're ECSSing this. Less staticky. Don't know if it's just a factor of the filter. Yeah, maybe the rain we had uh, a little while ago soaked the ground. Maybe it's helping my uh, inverted delta. This sounds real nice. With good wet ground, eh, to help the signal. Well, there's nothing wrong with this, but in my experience, slight bit more static. Here, even up on the ridge been raining cats and dogs for several days. Having said that, the last two have been dry. I'm happy. And I hope it remains so today. I've got stuff to do outdoors. Before I uh, really try to settle down for Christmas on the ranch. Dave, a pleasure. K0, okay. He's at a 60 to Yeah, okay, uh, Bill. I'll let you go and pick up some more. Really excellent condition. We had rain come through with thunderstorm about five hours ago. And it seems to have subsided. Uh, my noise floor is like S3. That's great. You're well over S9. And that's even better. I'll catch you later, Bill. If I don't, season's greetings to you and yours. Uh, I'll probably... I hope. K0RK, okay, ciao. Okay, Dave, plus 15. It's big no. You're right on top of the static. And as I... Uh, uh, thank you for the wishes. But let's uh, try to do it over the coming days as well. If not, the same to you and yours. Okay, I got Kilo One Delta Sierra Kilo. Hello, Devin, is that you? Uh, hello, Bill. Yes, good, good morning. Uh, Devin here. Uh, good copy from you. Uh, 5 by 9 plus, sometime peaking 10. Uh, very good copy. Uh, no rain here, it's just cold and sunny day. This is a nice speaker, so I'm not going to fight struggle over switching speakers out. The Bose might Merry be a deeper, you, you know, the best. Get it. Thanks, you know, nicer tone. Yeah, to it, but anyway. So my observation here is obviously they're both getting it great. They're both spot on frequency. I think the WJ is coming through on sideband with just a little bit less noise that's static in the background. Even when I put this noise reduction on, 
So, but and, and when I say that it it's better, I mean it is such a small difference. It's not huge, but this that's what we're doing here is we're measuring hairs, we're breaking hair, you know, splitting hairs. I, but we want to see which one does better. And so on AM, um, well, at least those signals that we checked before in the 49 meter band, this one was doing better. And then on sideband, I'm thinking this one's doing better. So let's uh, let's go down to that uh, long wave beacon. Hey, Devin, what a big footprint tonight uh, from Connecticut to California. Good evening, Zeta 6 Charlie. tell a difference. So there's a hint of like bleed through, probably from the medium wave band. Very common on long wave, or at least around here, especially at night. Let's see if we hit that sense over here. Yeah, I can get it. I can hear it too. I don't know if you guys can. Um, so that's, that's not uncommon to get that bleed to run long wave. Like I said, especially at night around here, but, uh, they both got the 365, which is a strong signal 350. Neither of them got, which I can get sometimes. And then 341, they both got about the same. So let's see here. So we've done upper side band, lower side band, long wave. We did an AM. We did a vomit. Uh, let's do some more AM. See if we can find something else. He's at a six eight one. Good evening. Let's see if there's, let's see if there's anything up high.
something close together. Thank you. 
CSS. thoughts on this signal I can't make up my mind honestly so the Watkin Johnson I don't know it's it's so solid and stable and it's just a freaking Sherman tank rolling through there and I, it, the, the, this was as good but and then every once in a while I could get that noise reduction to help right, by monkeying with the threshold. I, I think the sync on this radio is is as good or better than the Watkin Johnson, okay? And the Watkin Johnson sync is, it's not bad. Um, uh, the Watkin Johnson has a lot more filters to play with. So, like, I'm flipping between 3.6 and 3.2 here, but this one is stuck on 3.4 because... That's what I set it in the settings. I could change it to 3.4 or 3, excuse me, 3.6 to match this. But I, I mean, that's, you know, you're not going to do that every day. Just go into the settings to change that. So, um, uh, I don't know. So, I, I can't, I can't, I can't make up my mind on this signal. Um, maybe the 9,500 edged it out just because, like I said, you could uh, click on that noise reduction. And if you feathered in the, the amount of noise reduction, you could get it to a point where maybe you could make out the signal a little bit better than the WJ. So um, maybe. Um, so like when I my test I did this morning on the uh, ICOM 9000 and the Rody Schwartz EK070, the 9500 was a clear winner over both of those. It's not a clear winner over this. I don't think it's a loser. I, 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 I'm having a hard time deciding which one is better because this one has more uh, like the the attenuation steps. You know, it goes every six, so it's got like five different steps of attenuation. This one only has one. You click it, and you get one step of attenuation. This has two preamps. This one only has one. Uh, the sync, this one's good. This one is as good, maybe better. Um, uh, the ECSS on both of them sounds good. Uh, the Watkin Johnson might have had a little bit less static on sideband. Maybe. So I'm going to give it the thumbs up for that. Uh, but but it's not like this was so noisy you couldn't hear or anything or that it didn't even sound really, really nice. You know what I'm saying? So, and and the amount that, that this might have edged out the WJ on this signal at some times, not all the time, was so minuscule. So, I don't know. 
I'm not, I, I don't know if I can declare a clear winner here. I can tell you, I don't think either radio really lost. And I can tell you that by all the stuff that's on this thing, the different controls, the things that it does, it makes it a better radio. The, the voice recorder, the short record, the long record, the uh, five-step attenuator, the two-step preamp, the noise reduction, um, uh, just the fact that it's got a scope, even though it's a, an old scope that's more like a signal analyzer, spectrum analyzer than a modern spectrum scope, uh, the WJ doesn't have anything. So, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna, if I was stuck on a desert island and I could only have one of these two radios, I would definitely take this one. Uh, now, you say, well, this thing costs a lot more money than this. Well, when this thing was new, it was probably 15 or 20 grand. And that was back in like 2000. So, t over 20 years ago, it cost that much. Now, they're selling for what? Three grand, 3,500, something like that. You know, 20 years old. But, um, yeah, so don't throw money into the equation here. Uh, anyway, it was a fun test to do. All right. I love both radios. I don't think there was a clear winner. I just, but, but all the different things that this one can do, you know, it helps. And then finding weak signals, right? Oh, we didn't uh, we didn't do the twenty eight beacon twenty eight. Let's let's see if we can bring that in. Calling that one for the ICOM 9500. Um, like I said, then you just throw in the fact that it's got so many other things that it can that it can do. I mean, just the fact the, the scope alone, even though it's an old scope, it, it's not like a new one. It doesn't matter. The WJ doesn't have one. And then that voice recorder thing, where it, it keeps it keeps everything in a buffer, and you can go back in time for 30 seconds if you miss something. How cool is that? All right, then it's got the auto-tune feature. If you watch my other videos, you saw this. You can auto-tune within five kilohertz. Uh, it's got the click feature. If you want to have detents on your knob, all you do is push this button. Boom. Click feature. Boom, 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 boom. And then, or turn it off. Click. 
uh, the WJ, you can't even set the tension on it. Whatever, it's it's not bad. I mean, but it's not weighted. It's not like you could spin it and go forever. This thing here, and now it's only doing that because we're in CW. Go to AM. Oops. Yeah, and I've got it slowed down. You could you, I, you could make it go even faster, the incremental rate. But anyway, I sound like an ICOM salesman. <laughs> I love Bolt Radios. All right. So, uh, all right, it's 51 minutes. I don't think I've ever made a video this long. If anyone is still watching, man, you got it as bad as I do. But I love doing this. I love doing these tests. I didn't. If you would have asked me yesterday, an hour before I picked this up, if it would be where it is compared to the WJ, I'd have said, I'd have said probably not. But after playing with it, man, I love it. Oh, last test. Remember, uh, everyone says these things run hot? Well, we've been going for 51 minutes on film, and they were running for at least a half hour before that. I'm on the stock power cord plugged in. This thing is not hot, not, not even hot at all. The fan hasn't even come on yet. Did you hear it? I didn't hear it. Now, obviously the WJ is not hot, the dead, you know, but never does, has got hot. But all those tests you read about the power supply in this, burning these radios up, setting them on fire, causing nuclear explosions. I, that must be the older radios. I. The only thing I can think is that ICOM must have changed the power supply or did something. They fixed it. And the sink and the noise reduction, everyone else, you know, all these other testers are saying how it's garbage. It's not garbage. Works great. All right, here I am. Sound like an ICOM salesman again. Anyway, I love both radios. Thanks for hanging out.